Okay, so now let's talk about discount factors and interest rates. Uh, as I said before, I think these are concepts that you have seen uh, in previous courses like investments. So I'm just going to go quickly over this. Basically, the, the point here is just to set the notation that we'll be using throughout the course. All right, so discount factors first. We, we will define the discount factor as this Z, okay? So this represents what? This represents the price of one dollar that is going to be received at some future date, capital T. So it's the price today of this dollar to be received in the future. So from treasury bills, we can immediately get the corresponding discount factors. For example, a 90-day treasury bill that has a price that is trading at this price today, 99.1234%, gives me immediately the discount factor for that maturity, for the 90 days. So the Z uh, today times zero for a maturity of 0 0.25 years is this, this price here, 0 0.991234, okay? Uh, alternatively, instead of using discount factors, we also use interest rates, okay? Uh, as, as you already know, just saying what the interest rate number is, is not enough. I also have to say what is the compounding frequency because that will determine how much money I have at the end of a given period, right? So I, I always need to specify these two things, the interest rate number and the compounding frequency. The notation we will use here is this one that you see here. So R, T, um, it's the date today, usually, T, capital T, it's the maturity date. So this is an interest rate that applies to this period between small t and large t and capital T, okay? And the compounding frequency will, de will be denoted by this small n here. So this is the, the number of periods in a year when we compound interest, all right? Uh, these uh, discount factors and interest rates are all related. So given an observed market price for a zero coupon bond, I can relate that market price to the discount factor as we saw in the previous example, or to the interest rates usual, using the usual discounting formulas. Okay? So with discrete compounding, this is for how we discount the, the, the payment of 100%, so one uh, at the end, at, at capital T, we discount it back to today, small t like this, in the usual way, and it, uh, if we're using continuous compounding, this is how we discount, okay? So quick example, um, let's consider again a 90-day treasury bill that is trading at this market price. So this is the only thing that is observable. It's the market price, okay? Given this market price, I can transform the market price to a discount factor or an interest rate that is convenient for me to work with. Okay, so let's go through some alternatives. The the first one is the discount factor that we discussed before. It's immediately the 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 price, the the, the bond price, and then I can pick some different interest rates that I want. Okay, so some examples here. So um, let me open some notes so that we go through this example one through one three two. Here, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so again, this is the, the, the price that I observe for the bond. This is the future cash flow, the face value, 100% at the end of three, 90 days, three months, so 0 0.25 years, all right? So suppose I want the, the rate with annual compounding, like this, R1, okay? For this period, because 0 0.25 is the maturity of the bond. So how do I determine this interest rate? Well, solving the pricing equation, which is the market price today has to be equal to the present value of the cash flow, which is 100% or one. Okay, so I discount it uh, like this. Since this is an R1, meaning it has annual compounding once per year, this is how I, I discount, okay? So solving for this R1 gives me an annual interest rate with annual compounding of 358.46%. For some reason, suppose I wanted instead a, a rate, an annual rate, it's always an annual figure, but with quarterly compounding, four periods, four times per year, compounding four times per year. So I would denote it like this. The dates are still the same, because it's the same treasury bill, 
but the compounding frequency is 4. So uh, it's this, again the same equation, but I have to be careful with how I do the, the discounting here. So since now this is an R4, I have to divide the annual figure by 4, and then I have to raise it to 4 times the distance between the, the payments. So 4 times 0 0.25, which is 1, and then solve for an R4, and I get another number. Okay, it's close to, the, to this first number, but slightly different because the compounding frequency is different from this. Okay. Uh, third example, suppose I wanted um, continuously compounded rate, okay? Again, the same pricing equation, price in the market has to be the present value of future cash flows, but now the discounting is done like this, with a e to the, to the rate, because it is com continuously compounded, all right? Again, uh, uh, either write it like this or like this, solve for the rate, and you get 352. Again, close but not exactly the same as the previous rates because the compounding frequency is different okay so let, let me just stress out that what we have here is the following the only thing that is observable that is not up to discussion that is a number that everybody agrees on is the market price of the bond this is what we see in the bloomberg terminal this is given okay after that we can choose to represent that price as an interest rate that is more convenient to what we need to do. So I may choose to represent the price as this interest rate with annual compounding, or as this interest rate with quarterly compounding, or as this interest rate with uh, continuous compounding, okay? I'll, that's my choice, all right? And that does not change what exists in reality, right? So the reality is this market price of the bond, okay? So this is a bit like saying, um, the temperature here in this room can be, I can say it's, uh, 20 degrees Celsius, or I can say it's uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, or uh, the professional scale, which would be in Kelvins, uh, I would say it's 293 Kelvins, okay? And uh, it's, it's the, the, the analogy, it's a bit like this. So in the market, you typically see rates in uh, annual compounding or annual compounding, uh, or, or annual rate with semi-annual compounding, so one of these Two cases are the most common but then when we actually uh, work with models like we will do later on we will find it uh, much more convenient to work with rates in continuous compounding okay so we will actually be using a lot of these for for the models we'll see later on all right so going back to the to the pdf so obviously once i have uh, the interest rate in one compounding frequency, I can very easily get uh, an interest rate in any other compounding frequency because the, they are related like this. Uh, at home, try to, to, to do this example here. If you have one compounding frequency, try to get the corresponding rate in a, in a different compounding frequency like this. Okay, let me know, let me know in class if you, if you have any questions about this. All right, uh, another concept, spot and forward rates. So let's start with, with this definition of the term structure of interest rates. So the term structure of interest rates is a, a set of rates that um, all start today, hence the name spot, spot rates, and they are all rates on zero coupon bonds. And the difference between the rates is that they end at different points in time. They have different maturities. Okay. So for example, suppose I look at the market and I see three treasury bills. A 90 day treasury bill, the, the same one we were using before with this price, uh, uh, 180 days, so six months treasury bill with this price, and a 360 day or a one year treasury bill with this price. Okay, so from these three prices, I can compute a term structure of interest rates with three points, with three maturities. Okay, so suppose I want to find the term structure of interest rates in continuous compounding. Okay. So I'm going to solve for those three rates in continuous compounding, like you see here. The first one is uh, the one we did before, okay, in this in this previous example up here. It's this same number here, uh, this same number here, 352.19, okay, as we did. And the other two, I would do the corresponding calculations. So very quickly, um, one for one. This is the calculations that uh, the three-month rate is uh, the one we already solved for. 
before. Uh, for the six month rates, I would do the, the similar type of calculation, but using the price of the six month bill and uh, noting that it matures in six months, so 0 0.5 years, right? Then solve for the R, get 4%, and then for the, the one year bill, do the corresponding cal calculation and find the rate to be 5%. All right. So those were spot rates that started today. We can also talk about forward rates or forward discount factors. So let's start first with the discount factors. Okay, the forward discount factor, as the name suggests, rep uh, refers to a, a, a time period that starts in the future, hence the name forward. Okay, so we will denote um, that forward discount factor like this, like you see here, Z, and with the, 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 the dates, the T1 and the T2 being dates that are bigger than zero, so they start in the future, right? So how do we I determine a, a, a forward discount factor? Well, the idea is that uh, it, it is an indifference value that solves this equation, that makes the, these two alternatives in, uh, equivalent. Okay, so let's do this with an example which is maybe clear. So suppose I have the following two treasury bills, a three-month treasury bill trading at this price and a nine-month treasury bill at this price here. Okay, so this is a, a, a 0 0.25, 0 0.75 uh, bills. So let me open the timeline here. One, four, two. Okay, so uh, again, the, the timeline would look like this. The, the, the I can see my mouse. Okay, the, the three month bill has this price. So this is immediately the discount factor for three months. And the nine month bill has this price and it's again the, immediately the discount factor, the spot discount factor for nine months. What I want to know is the forward discount factor, meaning the, the, the discount factor that applies to this period here in the future. All right? So that's what I want to find, the forward discount factor between three and nine months, or 0 0.25, 0 0.75 years. Okay? And again, the idea is that discounting just once with this long discount factor, so the right-hand side here of the equation, has to be the same as discounting in two legs, like this. So one, one uh, not in two legs, so the discounting in two steps. So the first step is just discounting for three months using this discount factor that you see here, and then discounting again for the second part of the period with the forward discount factor. Okay, And that's the unknown that we want to find, such that these two alternatives give me the same amount of money. Okay, so solving for that Z, so dividing this by this, gives me this forward discount factor. Right. Uh, likewise, we can do the, the similar calculation for with an interest rate instead of, of a discount factor. Right? The definition is exactly the same. A forward rate is, a, is an interest rate that applies to a time period in the future. Right? And the idea is, again, to make me indifferent between doing the discounting or the compounding, like you see here, using a long rate or doing a compounding in two steps with a short rate and then with a forward rate. Right? Quick example. Let's say that now I have a term structure of spot rates, so they all start at time zero. Uh, like this. These are the maturities in years and this is the rates for the corresponding matur maturities. And note that I want, uh, now I have uh, a term structure of interest rates with semi-annual compounding, this R2 that you see here, so semi-annual compounding. And I want to find some forward rate, let's say the, the 0 0.25, 0 0.75 forward rate, also with semi-annual compounding, right? Again, let me open the timeline. Here. So it's the same type of, of reasoning. Uh, the, the rate for the full period is 4%. The rate for just three months is 3%. And I want to find this indifference rate for the future. The, the indifference rate is such that discounting once like this in a single step is the same as discounting twice with these two steps or uh, going in the other direction gives me exactly the same number, meaning compounding once at the 4% has to give me the same final value as compounding in two steps, one step 
at 3% and then the second step at this forward rate that I want to determine. Okay? So what we have here is actually the second alternative compounding because this is this has a plus here. So I'm, I'm, I'm compounding once at 4% for the full period of 75, 0.75 years and that has to be the same as compounding for a short period of 3 months at 3% and then compounding again for um, the remaining 6 months or 0 0.5 years at, at that rate that I want to find that R2. So solving for this R2 that you see here, uh, you're not seeing my mouse. Okay, for solving for this R2, you will give me, uh, it will give me this number of 4.5%, right? Okay. So uh, uh, once you have a discount factor, you, al you also have a, an interest rate and vice versa. So you can go from one to the other, as you see here. So um, at home, just check that you are able to go from the, the interest rate R2 to the, to the discount factor. Because sometimes it will be easier to work with interest rates. It's more intuitive, but sometimes it's easier to work with discount factors and we will use either one. Okay. Uh, like we have a spot curve, we also have can have a forward curve. In fact, we can have many forward curves depending on the starting point. Okay. Um, so, for example, suppose we have the rates from the previous example, and now we want to find a forward rate. So the, let me go back. We have the rates in this example one, four, three. So we have this set of spot rates. They all start today and they go out for three months, six months, nine months, one year. Okay. And now I want to find the set of rates, the set of forward rates that start at 0 0.25 years, so at three months. So I, want, I can have a forward rate that goes from 0 0.25 to 0 0.5, then another one from the same starting 0 0.25 but to a later ending point, 0 0.75, and so on. Uh, this one we already did. Uh, the other two, we can do it uh, in a similar fashion. Let me just show you here. Okay, so this is what we are doing. We want to find this. Now you can see my mouse. Okay, so the, you, 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 we want to find these three forward rates. They all start at some point in the future, hence the name forward rates. And it's, it's a set of three rates this rate, this rate, and this, this other rate. Okay, so the, the formulas are very similar to what we did before. Um, uh, at home, just make sure you are able to, to compute this, these three numbers. So the, the three months forward rate the six month forward rate and then the nine months forward rate. Okay. All right, I'll stop here.